Welcome back, folks. Happy Monday from Art of the City, live streaming here from Southern California, Solana Beach. And I don't know about you folks, but I could really use an art fix today. It has been such a crazy last two days, well, ever since Friday, with all of the craziness that we've been watching on TV and really seeing kind of, um, in my opinion, probably what the worst that humanity has to offer. I mean, it's been really sad to see a lot of these riots and things that are happening just even here in sleepy town of San Diego, California. But you know what I love about art is where you look at the news and you see all this negativity a lot of times in the world and you see that humanity really sometimes, um, you know, there's a lot to be said for how people behave then you get to see the flip side of that. And that's when you get to see the beauty of art because art really shows the best that humanity has to offer. It points to what we're capable of as human beings to bring beauty to the planet, to inspire people, to take nothing and make something incredible out of it. And that's really what art's all about. So today I have a really great artist coming on and that is Nick McGuire. He is a glass blower from San Diego. He grew up here and went to school here. And I've seen his work displayed in galleries for probably the last 15 years. There was a gallery in San Diego that carried his work that was right near our gallery. So unfortunately we weren't able to carry it at that time. But uh, now we're talking about bringing his artwork into our gallery. So that's going to be really exciting. So I'm going to bring him on. Just a couple things I wanted to mention is that, as many of you know, we're celebrating 25 years in art this year, which is very exciting. And over the last two months, we've been going through our big warehouse. We have a 10,000 square foot warehouse where we, we house the artwork. You know, we have it all um, environmentally um, you know, where the, the temperature stays the same to protect the art. We also have a frame shop and we have a printing shop, all of those things behind the scenes. And with that said, we have a lot of art that we have had in our vault for, my gosh, sometimes up to maybe 15, 16 years worth of artwork. And we're going to be bringing that out and doing our very first anniversary um, opportunity sale, if you will, not on the artists that we currently represent, but on things that we've collected over the years. So that's going to start this Friday here at the gallery. We open at noon from noon to five, and we'll have that ongoing uh, probably for the next two to three weeks. So you definitely want to get in line for some of those really good values on artwork that you know we just can't get anymore. So um, make sure you mark your calendar on that. And then just a couple of show dates. We have our Michael Floor show scheduled for the 27th and 28th, which will be in the gallery, but will also be an online platform for those of you who can't make it or are maybe out of state. And then the last thing is our big anniversary show. And so that's going to be a group show. All of our artists are, will be here and that's going to be July 25th and 26th. So save the date on your calendar. And I'm going to open up the show now with a beautiful video, since I've learned this new technology on the show to show video, of Nick's actual glass blowing. And then we're going to go into his studio so we can talk to him and see how things are going for him. But let me go ahead and put this up and show this great video here. And I'm going to minimize my screen here.
Wow, folks, isn't that amazing? Let me go ahead and take the video off. So it's an always uh, incredible thing when you can go into an artist studio. And when it's glass, it's a little bit trickier because there's a lot going on there. And I've had the opportunity to be in a couple of glass shops or hot shops, sometimes they call them. And the coordination between the folks that are there, it's like a um, watching a, a musical concert where the precision just has to be so on point. And now I'm gonna bring on the master who you just saw working, Nick, and he's gonna be able to share a little bit about the process that we just saw. So let me see if I can get uh, Nick to come into the stream here. Hi, Nick, welcome to the show. Hi, Ruthann, thanks for having me on. It's great to be here. Well, that was pretty spectacular watching you at work creating that beautiful feather. Oh yeah, well, you know, it's a lot of work that goes into each, each one of those pieces. And uh, I have to thank my team who uh, has been by my side for many years to be able to execute each one of those. They're, they're, quite, they're quite the uh, stressful and um, uh, just the you know, arduous process to get, to get to that finished product that you saw there. Yeah, it's, a, it's really beautiful. So share a little bit about your background, how you started in the art world and uh, specifically how you became a glass blower. So, um, okay. So as you know, I'm a, I'm a glass artist now and uh, but it, it wasn't always that way. Um, I'm actually standing in front of this piece right here. This is one of my paintings I did like um, in the early 2000s. And um, I, I always knew I was gonna be an artist when I was a child. I was just always drawn to that, that uh, you know, that craft and that practice. And throughout the years, I loved to sculpt. And I was always drawn to, like, you know, making a narrative through the two-dimensional painting. But at the same time, I did have a desire to, like, you know, make something three-dimensional. And, like, I love working with my hands. And so in college, I, I decided to, to, you know, try out a glass blowing class. And at first, I was like, well, this, this is pretty cool. But I didn't think much of it. I, I still... You know, was pretty set on my path as becoming more of like a painter, a surrealist painter or like something like that. And then um, after college, I was doing both. I graduated from UCSD with okay. a visual arts degree. And um, after that, I was doing both. So I was juggling two, you know, two art practices. Oh, boy, and that that must have been interesting because they're so different in execution. Right. And, and one thing that's different is how long it takes you to complete each one. So a painting might take me, I, I worked a little bit slower with the painting, so a painting might take me a few weeks to make it. And now I'm, and now on the other hand, I'm working with glass and it's taking me a few hours right. to, to, to arrive at a finished product. So, mm -hmm. um, so I, I had to pick one and I really, I really weigh this heavily. This was a big decision in my life when I was, you know, my early twenties. And I was like, you know what? The glass is fun. It's exciting. It's hot. And it takes like all my energy and it's really challenging. So let's see what we can do with that. And if, and if, uh, you know, that's not, that's not what, you know, what's going to work out, then we'll go back to painting. And here we are in 2020. I graduated from college in uh, 2004 and I've been with glass ever since. So, you know, well, and I think it, what's really great about what you're saying there is that you picked a discipline and you stuck with it because Right. You know, in my many years of working with artists, I mean, that is really the key to becoming really good at anything. But specifically with art is you really have to set your mind on what it is, the medium that you're going to perfect, and then just work that craft every single day to get that good to create what you're creating now, which are these spectacular feathers. I mean, they're just unbelievable. Thank you. Yeah, it's... Uh it's a long learning curve to get to a proficient level with the, with the glass art. And I think that's what um, I was drawn to, but that's also what many, what dissuades many other artists from um, pursuing that path. And when right. I go to these art shows, you know, you see, you know, there's a lot of painters, a lot of like um, ceramic artists or like metal artists, but there was only a few glass artists and, and so I thought, you know, hey, the glass is great because then, now I'm standing out in my own in my own art world as like, you know, a, more of a unique person. And then every artist always is striving for that, you know, standing out what's going to make them stand out in the in the you know art circuit. 
Right. And I think with glass, um, maybe you can share a little bit because, you know, when you're, when you're doing a painting, it's a solo act. It's you've got the canvas and you've got your paint and your brushes and it's just you and the canvas having that dialogue. When you're working with glass as a medium, it's a whole different dynamic. Now, not only are you working with this medium that, you know, literally is incredibly dangerous, but now you've got all these other folks that you're orchestrating. How does that work for you? Uh, you bring up a good point because um, when I, I always saw myself as more of an introverted person and my, you know, my, my passion to pursue a career in art, I was always kind of like an individual sport. And now here we are, you know, I'm blowing glass with like a team of artists and I've had to, <laughs> um, you know, acquire a whole new skill set of like, you know, working with people and, you know, working as a team cohesively. And that's, uh, that definitely is a, it's a totally different type of art form where it's, for me, I have, you know, multiple assistants in the hot shop and other assistants in like other, other parts of the process. And yeah, for me to make one thing, it's like, it's not me going to a canvas with a paintbrush and finishing. Right. It's me working, you know, scheduling, you know, time slots with assistants, scheduling time at a studio and, you know, coordinating like multiple schedules just, just to create one, you know, work of art. And, uh, and so it's really, you know, I wear a lot of hats to get, get each of the one, each one of these made. And it's, 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 it's a beautiful thing because, you know, you get to work with people, you know, you're making something that's like people enjoy and, you, and you're everyone involved. It's like a win-win. Right. But at the end of the day, your signature goes on that piece of art. So do right. you feel like in a way you've got this team, but they're also kind of an extension because of your arms, if you will, because you exactly. are the one, it's your artwork, you know, you're yeah. the one who is coordinating all of this. And do you find that there are certain people that you've just started to really get in a groove with to yeah. bring this together? You get in sync with, um, you know, other associate artists and their energy. And like, you, you find that you work good with certain people and then um, when when you do, you you, you keep them around and <laughs> be able to work. Be able to work, and and when people come and watch us work, they're kind of amazed. Like, wow, you guys like are just like moving all around each other. You're not even talking because we because we're so um, you know used to working together. We know the dance and we know the steps, and really like we're we're walking and stepping around each other with hot torches and and hot glass and sharp metal and. You know, a lot of times we have our back to each other with someone holding something that's very dangerous to another person. So there's a lot of trust and responsibility that goes into it. And we take our we take it very seriously when we're there. You know, safety is a big mm -hmm. priority. And and luckily over the years, you know, we've been very, very safe and we haven't had any major incidents. You know, you do get a few small cuts and burns. That's part of the part of the job. But, you know, nothing, nothing major. Right. It's very well enjoyable. I love, I love hearing that because I think sometimes even for myself, if I'm not familiar with a certain medium of art, I'll take a look at it and I don't know what has actually, what, how did it get there? You know, I understand there's an artist behind it, but to know that process is really, you know, a big part of art appreciation. So as far as like your, um, I guess, your philosophy about the things that you're creating. I know you create a lot of things that are derived from nature. Where did that come from? Your, you know, your expression, if you will. Uh, okay, so that's, good. that's a very good question. Um, and that's a question that I've actually been revisiting recently. Um, I've always been drawn to like, you know, intricate patterns and th things in nature that, that have, you know, uh, fascinated my my eyes and stuff like that. And basically a long time ago, I decided that I'm going to make things that beautify the world and that, you know, exemplify that and that people, people can, you know, art that people can live with in their house and it's not too jaunting. Um, right. That's one reason I love the glasses. It's so, it just, it's people, it draws people's eyes in because of the color. And as far as the forms go, I've been working with the feathers and, and the butterflies and things that, that kind of represent a symbolism of flight. And like, I just feel like that's a really good positive message to be sending out, um, especially like, you know, in these uncertain times right now, it's, I think people are able to, you know, reflect when they're in their house and when they see one of these things, then they can, you know, contemplate 
you know, like, hey, like, there is hope for the world. Like, we, mm. you know, there's something serene that we can, you know, calm me down and stuff when my, my nerves get unnerved. That is so great. And we need that. Boy, after this last weekend, we need it more than ever we have ever have, you know, just with everything building, you know, all this lockdown and then this. Um, how did you fare with the, the um, you know, the whole lockdown? Were you still able to create work? Because I know, I don't know how that works when you have a team of people with social distancing in the hot shop there. Right. So, so yeah, when, you know, when, um, when the, the COVID-19 pandemic hit, everyone, you know, I was really like really uneasy about it all and I wasn't sure what's going to happen. And as far as like working with other people, you know, in the workplace, like we do have small groups that we work with, right. but even though I've um, pretty much the general consensus amongst glass artists in the United States and other parts of the world is that like, Hey, let's, even though we go to these community glass studios where we all work like with small groups, a lot of them, most of them shut down. Right. And it's like, you know, let's just take a pause. Let's, you know, let, let's be safe. We don't need, we don't need to, um, you know, we don't need to be working. We let's, let's take care of our families and stuff like that. And so, you know, we, everyone stepped back from the hot glass studio, including myself. And, um, luckily I have, a kind of a home studio of what we call a cold, cold studio. Okay. Where we do cutting and grinding and polishing and processing of the pieces. And so I've been able to, um, you know, work on that more, that aspect of it and, and still keep producing art because, um, while some people, you know, they have a work a house they live in and a place of work they go to, I have a place, I have a house where I can live and work. Oh, that's great. So you were able to stay productive and, you right. know, keep things moving forward. That's great. Are you at your studio now? Uh, yeah, so I'm at my home studio and I'm in the living room and I'll show you a few pieces we have. Okay, kind of great. Around. And I'm going to minimize my screen so everybody can kind of see what you've got going there. Okay. okay perfect. Here's a, here's a, here's a nice row of um, vertical feathers. And these are all on, um, these are all on stands that swivel. Oh. All different colors. These are, these are pretty much like some of my top pieces here. The, Beautiful. Uh, a grade works. Um, I really enjoy the vertical stands. They just show off the, uh, the feather really well. And, and they fit in wall niches in people's houses really well, which is cool. Um, other than that, see, we got like, you know, we do like the little butterflies that fly around and stuff like that. Another series yeah. that's really successful that it launched recently. And let's see if I can show you. Here's like, I used to make more vases and stuff of like this nature with right. feathers around the top and marini patterns and stuff. But um, the market seems to like my, my regular feathers more without the, the vessels. And here's another like you know that this is probably one of the biggest feathers I've ever made. That thing's that thing's approaching like four feet. That's so, amazing. That thing on the end of a rod, like with a team, like it, it's pushing like what I'm even capable of holding, like all my strength and stuff. And so let's let's we can go outside to uh, the shop. I have one of my assistants here. Actually, we're working today's actually a work day. Did you just kind of open back up recently then? Yeah, we, we, we quarantined everyone, you know, everyone stayed away for like two months and now we're slowly getting back on track. There's Stephanie. Say hi. Hi. Hi, Stephanie. How are you? We're great. We're even better now that we're getting our art fix on a Monday. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Finally, right? Yes. So Stephanie just finished um, patootoing and polishing the ends of these uh, tusks, these elephant tusks. So these are some, this is a, this is a pair of elephant tusks that you want me to hold them? Yeah, you can hold them. Yeah. As you can see all those facets on there, this takes hours of, um, you know, skilled work to be able to do that. But they just, when, once it's done, it really makes it look like a jewel. It is like a jewel. Now, how do, would you, how will you display those? Those are just so gorgeous. These will be displayed in a stainless stand. That's, um, you know, a low profile as she's kind of holding it like that. And they'll, and they'll, they'll go together so you could put them like on a dining room table or something okay. or like a, a, an end table here we go so you, you got that yeah i got it okay. so you can hold them together and they go something like that all right oh i love those see there's no need to go after the elephants for their tusks when we have 
we have gorgeous art like this. Yeah, you know, and that's that, that actually is, uh, here's a, let's talk about the elephant test because that is the big reason I that I started that series of, of sculptures is because it's such a beautiful form in nature, yet, you know, it destroys the animal when they, when they, when they have to um, remove the I ivory tusks from the elephant. You can't just cut it off like a toenail and it grows back. Like, they have to kill the animal. Right. Usually. So I thought, you know, with glass, that's why this is called an eternal tusk, because this, this glass, this will last, you know, thousands of years if nobody damages it, whereas the ivory, you know, eventually will break down, and we can enjoy the beauty of the form. And I kind of give it a contemporary um, spin on it by putting, like, you know, like, like these have like purple inside of them. And, you know, but you have that na natural patterning on the outside. And I, and it kind of shows, I kind of, kind of spot it and colorize it to show like, you know, like, well, this, this elephant's been through like, you know, trials and tribulations in life. And, you know, it's like every tusk has like markings on it because it's, everyone's a unique piece. Everyone's, everyone's a unique animal. Oh, I love that. And I love the philosophy behind it because I think we can all, if we've lived a little bit, we can relate with uh, a little bit of the life's wear and tear, but also the beauty of that. Yeah. And so I, I really enjoy that series. And here, here's, here's a really beautiful feather. I call it the electric series whenever it has all this shimmering rainbow to it. Oh, gorgeous. And that one just spins really well. This is part of the shop. Um, to uh, to polish the glass, this is a big sanding disc that water goes on the pads, and we can you know get a nice flat surface. And then this is another um, piece of equipment called the lathe, and we has these wheels on it that spin, and then we can polish you know smaller, more delicate areas. And we have a sandblaster over there. And then some other odds and ends pieces of heavy equipment. Um, Here's some pieces over here. This is like where I do like welding and fabrication. And so uh, here's some nice feathers. This like, this kind of shows some size variance here. You know, this is like more of like a medium sized feather, and this is more of like a giant feather. So on the feathers, Nick, you yeah. also add metal work. So you you kind of have another discipline within the metal arts that you bring the two together. Right. Yeah. I. I um, I, I started blowing glass, and then after blowing glass for a while, I was like, well, I, I would like, love to present the glass in a way that, you know, I see, like, you know, best shows off its qualities. And so I taught myself, and I, you know, had other people tutor me, and so now I'm um, proficient in metal welding and fabrication, and lately I've been using more stainless steel because it, it's just nice and clean, and uh, it presents the work well. That's a lot of work. <laughs> But, you know, it's a lot of work, but it, it pays off because um, the glass is so delicate, and, and especially these feathers I make, they're really, um, they can be fragile sometimes. And when you're making a stand for them, I'm constantly, you know, putting in the stand, taking it off, putting it in the stand, customizing, and you know, every little clasp and, and bracket to just, you know, gently hold this piece of glass in place. And so uh, I feel comfortable being the one to handle it. And wouldn't want to, you know, give that's, it to someone and have it break. Wonderful and because it gives it the full presentation too, from you blowing the glass, and then it looks like the process doesn't end there because it looks like you're doing a lot of extra polishing of the glass as well, and then bringing it into another art form, which is presenting it. I right. think that then you really have your thumbprint on the entire process from right. beginning to end. It, it makes it, it makes it more of a you know a unique piece that that um, I'm able to provide exclusively because uh, it's just it's a lot of processes added onto each other to make it a signature piece that I, I, I have. Now, does every like, every time you do a feather, does every feather survive the process, or do you have a kind of attrition rate of certain pieces that don't make it? Because I know glass is really delicate and sensitive. I'm glad you brought that up because in the studio today, we have a piece that didn't quite survive, but we're going to, you know, keep continuous life in another, <laughs> in another sculpture that Stephanie is going to work yeah, on. Here. So here's a beautiful oh. Unfortunately did not, did not survive. And so what we did is we cut it in half 
and it's going to go into a, another series that so she's going to cut and polish yeah these oh. ends right here right and give it a nice a nice finish and then it'll go on to another piece that um i'm probably going to release later this year multi it'll be more of a contemporary piece with multiple pieces of feathers on a wall yeah. in a grouping yeah well, it's nice that you can, um, you know, salvage it. But I know one of the things that when I talk to glass artists, it keeps them humble is that um, the glass sometimes has a mind of its own. And no matter how good you are, you're going to deal with that. Yeah, you know, it's sometimes the glass just does what it wants to do. And that's part of the hard part of my job, because it's just sometimes you just have to go with it, go with the flaws and see kind of where it takes you into a more contemporary avenue that ne necessarily that you planned on. But it actually kind of creates different opportunities in which you can go with the piece even more. And I think that actually has a lot of uh, potential using that kind of route as well, especially with just the cold working process, which is my job. So, right. mm -hmm. well, that could be a good metaphor for the life that we're in today. We just yeah. got to roll with it. Yeah, just gotta it, roll with it. I've learned to be, you know, <laughs> flexible. And when when you, know, you, you have, an, you know, oh, this, this is what I planned on. And then all of a sudden something outside of your control changes that you have to, you know, be flexible and adapt. So I've learned to be very adaptable to, you know, the process of glass art and with glass art. And I, you know, I definitely like carry that over into my other aspects of living life. Well, it's, it's a incredible what you're bringing forth from this medium, because I've never seen anybody else do these feathers and all this intricate work that you're doing. So what are your plans? I know you, you've done some major installations for some of the casinos and I know that you've done some hotels and those types of things. What do you see on the horizon? Is there anything that you as an artist are really wanting to challenge yourself with coming up? Uh, yeah, there, there are a few things and, and those probably include, you know, larger, maybe like some large floor sculptures where, you know, it's a standalone sculpture in the middle of a room. Um, more fab, more, more um, combining metal work with glass to create a large piece. And then um, some larger wall installations where instead of having maybe just one piece of glass, like this beautiful feather here, maybe instead of one of those, you know, we'll have, you know, all of these pieces as one, one piece of art on the wall. Oh, that would be incredible. I mean, I would love to just have one large piece, you know, as an entry piece. You could just, it's such eye candy. You know, they're just so gorgeous. You could just sit there, glass of wine, you know, what else do you need? Yeah, the, I, I like, uh, I'm, right now I'm doing a project that I just did some prototypes for. Um, we're doing like a flock of birds going up a stairwell in someone's house. And then um, there's plans for like um, a what they call a kaleidoscope or a kaleidoscope of butterflies going on someone else's wall, like having like, you know, a whole grouping of butterflies. And so I, I, I think those are really fun and exciting. Yes. That sounds really amazing. So do you work with folks? Like if somebody had maybe an idea that they wanted to create something really unique, would you be open to sitting down and, and maybe talking about how that can be, um, created yeah, I from glass. I would. I mean, about yeah, like so. Half the business I, of my personal business of the glass business is like galleries, you know, one of a kind, unique pieces, and you know, fine art pieces going to them. And another half is large commissions, such as what you're talking about, where you know we meet with the clients, we go to their house, we look at the space, and then we come up with an idea that um, something that they're, they're interested in, and then and I bring to the table what's possible. And then we're able to create something that's really unique and customized. For their what space. a thrill. It's really rewarding. And I, that's, that's something that uh, I've always wanted to do. And now I'm doing it. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing to be living and doing what you wanted to do a long time ago. And I always like pinch myself, like, am I really doing this? And like, it's, it's pretty cool. That's great. Well, I think that you're bringing a lot of joy to the entire world. And the one thing that I always stress with, bringing artists like you on the show is that, you know, your history in the making, you're creating history, you know, even as we are having this interview, 
These are things that are going to document the time that we've been here on the planet. And you're adding to that. And I want to thank you for that because, you know, maybe for you, you know, you're enjoying it. But I think on the on the other side is folks like us and collectors, we're enjoying it. And then it goes on to the next generation and it will surpass all of us, which is I really love, exciting. I love that idea. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I joke and I say, I wonder what the last surviving piece of art that I make will be and, and how long will it be out there known that like, you know, it's it, living in its in its full form because wow. the glass potentially could, could uh, you know, last thousands of years. We today currently, you know, we're, we're digging up pieces of glass from, you know, Egypt and, you know, these old civilizations and stuff yeah. that are thousands of years old. So when I make something today, you know, is it going to last for 4,000 more years, 5,000 more years? You never know. Yeah, I probably, and um, we're all part of it. So yeah. I want to thank you again for being on the show. And I'd love to see your artwork come into our gallery soon. But folks, yeah, we'll go to Nick's website. And we put it here on the screen. You can uh, take a look and see all of the things that he's creating. And then hopefully once you get, um, you know, where you have enough artwork, we'll have you come in here and we'll do a little unveiling, hopefully without the mask. But, you know, uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. We're still wearing masks and we go on public. But yeah, you can check out the, and my Instagram page has a lot of uh, current pieces and stuff. So I look forward to it. And thanks for having yeah. me. Well, awesome. I appreciate it. So you're on Instagram. And what is your, is it just Nick McGuire? Yeah. Or? Nick McGuire. Yeah. Without a K in, in my name. It's okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll get, okay, everybody, your job is to jump on there and start following Nick today. And then uh, go to his Facebook page as well so we can support the artists. And, of course, if you see something, you know, uh, call me or and I can make a, a time where you guys can meet and put something fantastic together. So thanks awesome. again, Nick. Very good. All right, Ruthann. I'll see you again Thank soon. You. Okay. Be well. Bye-bye. Another incredible artist, folks, brought to you by Art of the City here. We are so lucky to have to be surrounded by great artists. And my goal is eventually to bring artists in from all over the world. So you'll have to um, you know, stand by for that. But I've been reaching out to other countries. Our phone is ringing, which means that we have people interested in art. So that's pretty exciting for me since we just opened our doors um, and we are now open from noon to five. So we've been kind of testing it out, but our big buildup of course is gonna be this weekend when we have, um, we're bringing in all the artwork that we're gonna have our anniversary sale on. So don't miss that. The rest of the week, I have some great artists coming in. I have Wednesday, two artists, Wendy Norton, who is going to be live streaming from her studio in Florida, and then a local artist here, Mike Dunn, who is known for his metal work. So that's Wednesday, one o'clock. And then on Friday, we're going to go back to the islands and we're going to meet with Dennis Matheson. Some of you folks remember Dennis. He does the metal work also, but he does these beautiful kind of um, routed metal. You kind of have to see it. Uh, in person, but we'll do our best to show it on the show. Dennis has been really kind of the person who brought forth the whole metal art movement in Hawaii, and you'll get a chance to hear all about that. But um, And then we have two more weeks coming up where we're going to live stream three days a week, and then we'll see. If the masks go off, I we may just be so busy with you folks coming in the gallery that we can't do the show three times a week, but we'll still do one at least every week. So have a great day, folks. I hope this uplifted your day. Turn off the TV. Let everybody else tell you what's going on. There's nothing that you can do right now to affect that. So let's focus on the positivity. That's the one thing that art brings to us is you folks are collectors. You surround yourself with beauty, things that are positive and uplifting. And I'll tell you what, you are that beacon of light to all those people you come in contact with because Anybody who absorbs positivity can only reflect it. So go out and do that today. It's Monday. Have a great day, folks. And I'll see you on Wednesday here, 1 p.m. live streaming Art of the City. And tell your friends about us.